Welcome to MacGyver's Workshop, where you never know what we're going to be working on next. If you're not too careful, you just might learn something. Hi there. Welcome to another episode of MacGyver's Workshop, where you never know what we're going to be working on next. And if you're not too careful, you just might learn something. So, today what we've got is uh, uh, my neighbor called me up and said his truck, you know, became all self-aware and uh, he was having all kind of, you know, misfire codes and thought he had some bad coils and stuff and, and he said, uh, now it just won't start. So, uh, we're going to take you through this and, uh, and show you uh, just the craziness that, uh, that can happen in a vehicle and some things you want to be careful of when you are working on a vehicle as far as things not to do. So stay tuned. Alright, so with uh, most uh, Chrysler products, like I said, this is a 2005 uh, Dodge 1500. Uh, 4x4 with a 4.7 liter in it. Um, the first place you want to look for is uh, the automatic shutdown relay and that is located right here in this little vacant spot that I've got with um, the uh, uh, they call that the integrated power distribution module or something but anyway it's a fuse box and what you want to do is um, determine if this thing is kicking on when they turn the ignition on. If you don't feel this thing click, then the truck will crank, but it won't start. So that's what we had. He would crank and crank and crank, and, and uh, it wouldn't ever start. And uh, so uh, we went over there, did some diagnosis, and you can, you can very gingerly pop the... Uh, lid off of this relay we're going to do a little test and uh, we'll know that the engine won't crank we've got a crank in a no start condition now what we're going to do here is we shall manually activate that relay and I'll take the camera from you Eric and if you want to go in there and be my cranker starter guy now I'm gonna have him go ahead and crank the motor and then you'll see when I make this relay the engine will start alright go ahead Eric and when I let go it dies all right, thank you, Eric. Now, I'll give you back the camera there, good sir. Now, what we're gonna do here, this is actually a pretty simple circuit to trace. Um, there's been on the forums some talk about the uh, traces corroding inside this fuse box or integrated power module. Um, just, save a bunch of time here uh, I've already uh, I've already confirmed that it's uh, this box is okay which is really good because I hear a lot of people talking about it's like 500 bucks and takes forever to get and uh, there's no point in buying a junkyard one because it probably gonna be no better than the one you had so uh, but if you should have to uh, if you should have to get to the point of diagnosing this that uh, this front right pin here is the one that goes to the computer. I'll pull this relay and secure power here. Pop this relay back out again. I don't know if you can get down on get down in there, Eric, but this pin right here, okay, is the one that has to be grounded by the computer. To engage this little electromagnet okay which will push this in or pull this in and make the switch and that will 
that will send power to your fuel pump and your ignition coils and all that good stuff and allow the engine to start. So uh, there's a, uh, of course, I would recommend you get something like an all data subscription. Uh, you can go to alldataDIY.com and get a subscription for your vehicle if you really want to do it yourself. Um, the uh, uh, some of the different vehicles may be wired differently. This one, this connector right up here underneath the uh, the box. Uh, maybe come around the back side here of me. This connector right here, okay, is the one where that pin goes to. So if you use your use your uh, uh, multimeter set on continuity, you should get a beep on one of those pins. Um, the pin on this one is called K51. Uh, it'll show you in, a, in an exploded view diagram. I've already got this box mounted back in here, which is a pain in the butt, so uh, I'm just going to have to take my word for it on that. And it wasn't the problem with this truck anyway, but I am going to show you what was the problem. Now, the, that wire I showed you, or that pin from the uh, relay, you're good there, Eric. I'm just going to come around you and get on my step stool here. Because your truck sits so dang far from the ground. <laughs> dang, rednecks. Anyway, uh, it goes to your powertrain control module right here. And it goes to connector C3, which is this one. Now, there's a little clip on the side. You have to, like a security lock, you have to pull back. You may have to get in there with a little tiny screwdriver. And then you press on the, the little latch there to get it out. And on this one... It's a natural colored connector, and it's pin three, which is that one right there. So you got one, two, three. Okay. Now, we had no continuity there. All right, when you put the one wire of your multimeter on that pin of that relay, and here, there was no continuity. But, just by dumb luck, all right, I happen to be looking at this thing, and I noticed this right here by my thumbnail. Now, if you can zoom in on that, Eric. Well, you won't get too there close. We, there we go. All right. That is where somebody probed this wire with... Uh, a multimeter, uh, the sharp point of a multimeter. And what's happened over the years is corrosion's gotten in there and ate that wire up. Now, if I probe right here with my multimeter, I have continuity. So what we have to do is we have to repair this and splice it and seal it up with some good heat shrink and then the, uh, uh, the truck will start. And then we can move on to your other codes and issues that you actually came in here for. It was just coincidental that this corrosion just finally took hold and killed you. So now what I'm going to do here, since he's got the camera rolling, and we'll just keep rolling with it because that's how we roll in the diver's workshop. Undo this piece of tape and get it out of our way. And uh, the other thing that I did confirm was is that the color of this wire is brown with a white stripe for where it comes to that pin three on this connector and this is brown with a white stripe. So we're going to uh, we're going to go ahead and cut just a little bit each side of this wire and cut that corrosion out of there because we don't want to fix our wire and then it just corrode back up again. This corrosion is like cancer, you know. Now, don't try this at home, kids, because I've done this a time or two. I can strip this wire like this and not cut the wire in half. There you 
good you can do it I guess but if not then I would recommend a proper pair of wire strippers but I like Alton Brown do not like unitaskers and a pair of wire strippers are pretty much just a unitasker they don't do nothing else however these little bad boys <laughs> which are called lineman scissors uh, my day job what I do for a real living because unfortunately I don't make enough to make a good living off of YouTube yet so I work in the field of information technology now what we're going to do is we're going to splice in a little section of wire here we don't want to just pull this because then we're going to put everything in a bind right there we don't want to do that so we're just going to make a little section of wire there we're going to fix that we're going to solder it and then we're going to put some heat shrink on it and we're going to crank this truck up alrighty now now I got everything all prepped up and ready now the important thing about soldering wires is you want to make sure you make a good mechanical connection as well as the solder you don't want the solder holding your wire together that's no good so make sure you get a, put a good old Western Union splice on there where it's decent and strong and then we'll get this little puppy hot here I use a 950,000 watt soldering iron because I'm too impatient to wait for a cheap one to heat up. And you just flow your solder into that connection there, not too much. And that's what it should look like when you're done. And then, put you some shrinky dink on here. Our little handy dandy heat gun, or you can use a cigarette lighter, or whatever. And I return to you on. And heat that up so it will shrink down around that wire. And seal it from the elements so we don't have any more corrosion getting in there. it's very important because you want to seal that connection otherwise you're going to be back doing this again in a couple of years because that copper that copper wire will corrode and in this case it corroded to the point where a broke connection the truck wouldn't start so. so now we'll replace our little piece of electrical tape that we cut off here Let's plug this back in here and let's see if a truck starts there. Right? I got a funny feeling it just might. What do you think? Well, I think it will. I don't know. You know I ain't never fixed nothing before. <laughs> I gotta play Mr. Contortionist here. Get down in here so I can run this back in the way it was. wait to hear that thing click and then pop your little your little locks back to hear that click that was important all right let's see if it starts keep the, keep the video running so we don't have any interrupted so nobody thinks I'm cheating I'll tighten that up in a minute why don't you get on that uh, get on that relay there is as good as you can I'll put some light on you and let's see if uh, you know they'll see that relay make when it uh, when I turn the key on clear yep yep it's on the floorboard
radio announcer once said in a highly emotional point in a, I think it was a baseball game, how about that shit, sports fans? <laughs> <laughs> so, I've seen a lot of stuff on the forums about this particular type of issue. Uh, this case was strictly because uh, of something that happened probably three, four, five years ago or longer. And it just took that long for that wire to corrode to the point where it finally broke connection and caused a no start condition. So there you have it. Check the, um, feel free to post your comments below. Um, you know, uh, you can always email me here at MacGyver's Workshop at gmail.com and I try to check it as often as I can and I will respond. And uh, if you haven't already, Please subscribe and click the little bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I post a new video because I got a cool kick-ass project going right now that's uh, kind of a cross-promotional thing with my son's uh, YouTube channel uh, where we're doing our death cart challenge so uh, stay tuned for that and uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>